Hey friends, and welcome back to my channel. If you are new around here, welcome, welcome, welcome. My name is Julia, and I'm currently a fourth year medical student. So this video is going to be the first part of a three-part series, you guys, in which I break down the residency process. So wh what do medical students do once they graduate? What is this residency thing I'm hearing about? What happens if a student doesn't go to residency? What do you do after residency? How do you get to residency? All of your questions will be answered in this series. Right, you guys so in this first part we are going to discuss residency and what exactly it is in part two we're going to get into the nitty-gritty of exactly what the application process is in the interview trail and in our last part we are going to talk about the match process and how a student goes from a medical student to a certain residency program so in a nutshell, you guys, residency is the hands-on training that a medical graduate gets once they finish medical school. So in order to start residency, you had to have graduated from a medical school and hold a medical degree. And residency is the hands-on training that you will get in your field that you determined you wanted to go into in medical school. So for example, someone who finds a passion for pediatrics or OBGYN or surgery determines that in medical school and in their last year they apply into that specialty and then they go and train in that residency program. So residency is where you really work on the skills and the doctor that you want to be. The length of a residency program depends on the specialty that you are going into and the type of doctor you will be. So I will put up here some common specialties that you might have heard of and the general length of training of how many years it takes to become that kind of doctor. As you guys can see, some residencies get very long in length from five to six years for some of the surgical subspecialties. But as you can imagine, these are some of the most highly trained individuals that are working on very sensitive parts of your body, your brain, doing surgery. They need that extra length of training in order to really maximize and optimize their clinical skill. So the first year of residency is often called the intern year or your internship. It is not internship in the way that we think about it in which you're a student or a you know unpaid learner. That is not the case. They are very much so doctors. They have graduated medical school. It simply does indicate that a resident is in their first year, their intern year. So year one is an intern. Typically junior residents are second years and senior residents are in their final year of their residency program and then there is such a thing as a chief resident so chief residents are residents who have extended their residency by one year so they've already completed their X amount of years of residency and they stay an additional year to do administrative tasks and really behind the scenes work that you don't often see and it really makes them highly sought after candidates for whatever they're going on to next in life. So just to recap, because I know it's a lot of information thus far, you guys, you graduate from medical school and you begin residency in your field of training, the field that you have decided you are passionate about and you wanna go into. You start your first year of residency, which is called your intern year. You are an intern. Your second year, you are usually a junior resident. Um, and then your third or your final year of residency, depending on how long your residency is, you are the senior resident. Some people elect to stay an additional year and become a chief resident in which they are doing more administrative tasks and delegating kind of roles to the residents under them. So that is the hierarchy. So what exactly is a doctor doing in residency? So immediately when you begin residency, you are already seeing patients, you are getting histories, doing physicals, and taking care of patients. However, in your first year, it's really focused on learning and solidifying those fundamentals, making sure you have a good knowledge base so that you will one day be able to practice on your own. As a junior resident, a second year resident, you are now responsible for your interns who are fresh out of medical school and new to learning. So now you are more in a teacher role. And as a senior resident, you are the leader of the team. You are overseeing the junior residents and the interns. You are preparing yourself for your next stage of life, whether that is to do a chief year, to go on to fellowship, which is additional training after residency, or to start your career as
as an attending physician, a supervisor doctor. So the specific tasks that a resident is doing during the residency training is really dependent on the type of residency they are doing. Surgical residents are doing very different tasks than pediatricians. Not only are they working with different populations, different types of humans, but they are doing different things. Surgical residents are more focused on enhancing their surgical skills, getting to, into the operating room, managing surgical patients, whereas pediatricians are focused on children, the physiology and management management of kids and the pathologies that they see. Internal medicine doctors manage adults and the chronic diseases that they see. OBGYN residents are doing labor and delivery. They're, you know, delivering babies. They are doing and assisting in C-sections. So the type of residency training that you do is going to dictate the type of skills and tasks that you are doing in your day-to-day -day life. In residency, you are always supervised by someone above you. So interns are supervised by junior and senior residents. Residents are supervised by fellows. Fellows and residents are all supervised by attending physicians who are the independent doctors that oversee the team that have completed all of their training. So residency is the opportunity to learn and really enhance your clinical skills because there's always somebody who is there double checking your work to make sure that no harm comes to patients. Another major aspect of residency training is that you know, residents are often considered to be overworked and underpaid just because of the sheer fact that for the medical aspect, for medicine and doctoring, they are the primary workforce of the hospital. They are the ones managing the patients and they're 24 seven on the floors, putting in the orders, seeing the patients, and they are relaying the messages back to the, the head doctors that are in charge. But it is mainly resident run in a lot of hospitals. So they are the ones that are taking care of patients around the clock. Residency is very demanding. Most residents are working six days a week for a lot of the year. They are working up to 80 hours, if not more, a week. And they are not compensated nearly enough for the amount of hours that they work. And you can go research those numbers if you are interested. However, the silver lining is that residency is the opportunity to not only take care of patients and really become a great doctor, but you also become very close to your residents that you are working with and the faculty and staff of the program that you decide to go to. So it is a very enlightening experience, but a difficult experience from what I've heard. As you all may know, I'm going into internal medicine after I graduate in the spring. So internal medicine is a three-year residency and I am currently in my interview process right now. So I am visiting with different programs virtually and trying to figure out what program would be the right fit for me. So wish me luck, you guys. So last question, what does a person do if they don't go to residency? So if a person does not complete a residency program in the United States, they cannot practice clinical medicine. So if a medical graduate opts to not complete a residency program, which does happen here and there, they simply cannot participate in clinical care of patients. So they cannot be able to do clinical jobs. So they would have to do non-clinical opportunities such as consulting or jobs in public health, research, anything not clinically related to patient care. As I've already mentioned you guys, residency is a grueling long process and you want to be fully committed to that to that process, to those amount of years. So there are definitely people who finish their medical education and are like, this isn't for me. I don't think residency is for me. And they venture into other career paths. And that is absolutely okay. It doesn't happen very often, but it's good to know yourself and know what you want and find a career that fits that. So I hope this video shed a little bit of light on what exactly residency is and when you hear someone say I am a resident or a resident physician or I'm an intern physician or something like that that you could kind of get your bearing and your sense of what exactly this terminology means. I know that healthcare and all the terms that we use and all the folks that you see can sometimes be a little confusing. So I wanna help simplify that and break it down so that you know what's going on when you receive healthcare and when individuals walk in the room and introduce themselves so that you know what kind of doctor they are, where they're at in their training or all of those things just to kind of participate more in your care and 
feel like you have more control and awareness of your health and your health care. So I hope this was informative for you guys and definitely check out part two where I'm going to discuss the application and interview process and how exactly a fourth year medical student goes through the process of getting to residency and what that interview trail looks like. So make sure you guys check it out, subscribe, be sure to like this video, leave any comments or questions you have in the description box below and I will definitely answer them and I will see you next time. Love you family.